then again, many highly informed people believe that's exactly what happened. That would mean the Chinese government is responsible for killing millions of people around the world. It would also raise questions, obvious questions, about motive. Why would China unleash a deadly virus on the globe? To the American mind, that is an unimaginable thing to do, but the Chinese government thinks very differently from the way that we think. And here's why. America has been the dominant power in the world for more than 100 years, since the end of the First World War when Europe destroyed itself. Empires destroying themselves always paves way for new empires, something we should keep in mind at the moment. So American attitudes about everything are shaped by generations of casual affluence. We're in charge and we always will be in charge. That's what all of us assume. But the Chinese government does not assume this about us or them. Until fairly recently, China was a poor country. There are still millions of living Chinese who remember seeing their neighbors starve to death during famines. As a result of that experience, China is very aggressive and very ambitious in ways that your average State Department official from Bethesda could not begin to comprehend. So would a government like that use COVID as a bioweapon? Well, why wouldn't it? The coronavirus reshuffled the global order. It crushed the American economy. It made China preeminent. If China takes over the world, and that appears to be coming, COVID will be one of the main reasons it was able to. So by definition, you would think we would want to know where COVID came from. That's a meaningful question. But Joe Biden doesn't want to know. He ignored the report he ordered. He ignored the findings of his own intelligence agencies. That's bizarre when you think about it. And if you think that's weird, how about this? This February, Biden canceled a counter-espionage program called the China Initiative. Now, the point of that program was stopping the rampant threat of our national security secrets by the government of China. But the White House decided to very little fanfare that somehow that program was racist and therefore it had to end. That means the Chinese government can now spy and steal with impunity. Not since Franklin Roosevelt colluded with Joseph Stalin has an American president done anything like that. But Joe Biden didn't hesitate. And then he kept doing things like this. Now Biden says he plans to end tariffs against China, tariffs that Donald Trump put in place and that China has been complaining about ever since. And not only is Joe Biden ending tariffs against China, Joe Biden's Justice Department has just arrested the man responsible for those tariffs. His name is Peter Navarro. He was the most effective China hawk in the Trump administration. Last month, Peter Navarro was handcuffed at a Washington, D.C. airport and dragged to jail in leg irons. Why? Supposedly because of January 6th. But Peter Navarro had literally nothing to do with January 6th. He wasn't even there. But Joe Biden didn't stop there. Steve Bannon was the other notable voice in the Trump administration, warning about the growing power and malicious intent of the Chinese government. In November of last year, Steve Bannon was also arrested by the Biden Justice Department, also on absurd pretexts. So take a step back. What's the message here? Well, it's unmistakable. Don't criticize the Chinese government or we will throw you in jail. Now, if you happen to be watching all of this from Beijing, as Chinese leaders definitely have been, you would be applauding. Joe Biden just arrested your loudest critics. How gratifying is that? Things are going well for you. You already control Canada, whose brain-dead prime minister is effectively a Chinese lackey. Now the most powerful country in the world is doing exactly what you want it to do. You'd be thrilled by this. You'd be especially thrilled to see Joe Biden destroy America's single greatest asset, which is its domestic energy supply, and make the United States entirely dependent on Chinese technology for wind and solar projects. If you're the Chinese government, this is the masterstroke. This is the checkmate. Once you control a country's energy grid, you control that country. And you would know that because you didn't go to Yale Law School. And you know something about reality as a result. And by the way, if you're watching all of this from Beijing, you would find it especially amusing to have the president of the United States sell you his country's strategic petroleum reserve, even as he declared oil and gas off limits to his own population. If you could pull that off, you would know you were entirely in charge of the U.S. government. You could make Joe Biden do anything. But of course, you already knew that because you've seen it in action. When American forces left Afghanistan, Joe Biden turned over Afghanistan's entire mineral wealth, which is vast, to the Chinese government. That would include gold and coal and oil and gas, lithium, rare earth minerals, resources the United States needs to make smartphones, automobiles, power our energy grid. But Joe Biden handed all of that to the government of China. And then he kept going. 
Biden also dropped the Trump administration's efforts to ban Chinese surveillance programs that poses social media apps. That means WeChat and TikTok. Then Biden approved licenses for Huawei, which is controlled by the Chinese government, to buy auto chips. That gives the Chinese government even deeper control over the automotive supply chain in this country, one of our last manufacturing sectors. And then as a humiliating flourish, a deep and groveling kowtow, Joe Biden signed a so-called climate pledge with China. China will ignore this pledge. Obviously, they already are ignoring it. But we will take the pledge seriously because that's the kind of country we are. And that pledge will further cripple our domestic energy production because that's what it was designed to do. It's all pretty amazing when you think about it, when you put it in context. Whatever helps the Chinese government, Joe Biden has dutifully done. Whatever hurts America's most important strategic interests, he has also done. But why has he done this? How did the Chinese government wind up with so much control over the United States president, over Joe Biden's behavior? We've been mulling that for more than a year. And that's why, since October of 2020, we have been on the Hunter Biden laptop story, because that seems like the key to this question, how the Chinese government got so much control over Joe Biden. Now, the tech companies have tried to censor that story at every turn. They're doing so again tonight, and it's not surprising why. They're beholden to China as well. But we've continued to pull those threads. So has the Daily Mail. In April, the Daily Mail reported that a whistleblower was in possession of 450 gigabytes of deleted material from Hunter Biden's laptop. The whistleblower's name is Jack Maxey. He'd gone to Switzerland, fearing retaliation. We wanted to know more. So in April, we flew to Zurich to meet Jack Maxey. Here's part of what he told us. So you've taken a look at the laptop, and you now believe that there are deleted files on that laptop that nobody else has seen, but that you have found and seen. Um, describe how you found these files. Well, my first purpose of this trip was to get the 128,000 emails, of which 120,000 were in archives on the original uh, visible portion of it, and to catalog all of the text messages, which most of which are also in archives. And we did that relatively quickly. I was just going to make copies for the Senate, the House, and all the state AGs, and see if maybe local sheriffs could start enforcing the laws that the feds wouldn't. And about day five of this process, uh, one of my guys said, hey, Jack, I feel like there's more on here. Do you mind if I try some little tricks? And I said, sure, go ahead. And within 15 minutes, he's like, oh, my God, we just got 10, th you know, 10 gigabytes of this, five gigabytes of this, that, and the other thing. Uh, Ultimately, we ended up with over 100,000 more emails that we've been able to scrape out of it, 80,000 images and videos. So you can say what you want about Jack Maxey and you can dismiss him by calling him names. But the story he was telling was really interesting, tantalizing, in fact, given what we already knew was on the laptop. But for some reason, no one in law enforcement appeared to be listening or even care. But the Daily Mail kept going on this. Recently, they said they gained access to a backup of Hunter Biden's iPhone from the laptop. And it's a good thing they did. It turned out to be a trove of fascinating information. It included a voicemail from Joe Biden to his son talking about a story in the New York Times about Hunter Biden's business dealings in China. Here's part of it. Hey, pal, it's dad. It's 8.15. Um on uh, Wednesday night, if you get a chance, give me a call. Not, nothing urgent. Just want to talk to you. I thought the article, at least the thing on online, is going to be printed tomorrow in the Times, was good. I think you're clear. And uh, anyway, um, if you get a chance, give me a call. I love you. So the context for that is complicated. Here's what's not complicated. Joe Biden has said on the record repeatedly that he had no knowledge of his son's business dealings with China. That proves Joe Biden was lying, and we have a lot more on this coming up. But just know that. That voicemail, which apparently is real, proves that Joe Biden knew about his son's business dealings with China. That ought to be enough to spur a wave of media inquiries to the White House. Why did you lie to us? You haven't seen that. Now, the Times piece you just heard Joe Biden reference was published on December 12th, 2018. The story reported on Hunter's dealings with a man called Yi Ming. 
He led the CEFC, China Energy Company, until 2018. At that point, he was arrested on charges of corruption and economic crimes by the Chinese government, which is never a good thing. He hasn't been seen since. The government of China has seized most of CFFC's assets. One of his top deputies, called Patrick Ho, was also convicted in New York of bribing African officials to help Iran avoid oil sanctions. What a group. These are Hunter Biden's business friends. So why would Joe Biden have any interest in this? Why would he be concerned about a New York Times story on CEFC and Hunter Biden? Well, it could be for the obvious reason. Joe Biden himself was making money from this, from CEFC, lots of money. According to emails obtained by the New York Post from Hunter Biden's laptop in October of 2020, one of Hunter Biden's business partners, James Gillier, explained that Joe Biden would receive a 10% stake in CEFC. Quote, the equity will be distributed as follows, he wrote. 20 to Hunter, 20 to Rob Walker, 20 to Gillier himself, 20 to Tony Bobulinski, 10 to Jimmy Biden, that would be Hunter Biden, that would be a, the president's brother, and quote, 10% held for the big guy. The big guy. So Tony Bobulinski, whom we interviewed for a full hour, he got a 20% stake of this deal, told us that there was, quote, no question the big guy is who he so obviously is. That would be Joe Biden. This arrangement meant millions of Chinese dollars for Hunter and Joe Biden. In early 2017, just a few weeks after Biden left the White House the first time, a company controlled by Yi called State Energy HK sent $6 million in wire transfers to Robinson Walker LLC. Robinson Walker LLC was controlled by Rob Walker, one of Hunter Biden's business partners. Then in June of 2017, Hunter Biden emailed Yi demanding $10 million more as seed money for a new company called Sinohawk Holdings. In August of 2017, another Hunter Biden-controlled company called Hudson West received a $5 million wire from CEFC. CEFC also paid Hunter Biden's law firm, Owasco, nearly $5 million. These are according to bank records reviewed by Senate investigators. If we just pause here for a moment. In their details, these stories bear a striking resemblance to the Russiagate insanity that we were dragged through for years. Remember, they go on TV and bore you for an hour with how all these things fit together, and then this money went that way. But in the end, there was nothing there. Operating on the theory, which isn't really a theory, it's true that they always accuse you of exactly what they themselves are doing. It's kind of striking that the truth...